Here we are, class of 2018. 10 months later, at Madison Square Garden, in New York, with our families and with our friends, dressed up in purple, with this funny hat on the top of our hands. NYU graduates, congratulations guys, we made it. As probably most of you, I'm having mixed feelings about this moment. On one hand, I am so incredibly proud of what we achieved this year. But on the other hand, Dean Morrison, does it really have to end now? Can we stay another, another year? Full scholarships for everyone. We are running out of money. Regardless of my mixed feelings, one thing I know for sure, we are incredibly thankful for this moment. We are thankful to NYU Law, who brought us together and changed our lives. The fact that we are here today, together, this precise group, is a beautiful, beautiful coincidence. Looking back in our lives, any slight change would have led us somewhere else. And yet, here we are, colleagues, friends, brothers, and sisters. How incredibly lucky are we? We are thankful to New York, a city that welcomed us from day one. Here, I feel that everyone comes from somewhere else. So in this city, no one is ever truly a foreigner. Today, we are not only graduating from NYU, we are also graduating from New York a place we have been proudly calling home. And finally, we are thankful to our families for their constant support, for their undying love that made us who we are, and for the many, many sacrifices they endured to make this day possible. In many ways, you are the reason we are here. And we will never, never forget that. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. It has been quite a ride. When I think about how I will see this LLM in the big picture of my life, one word comes to mind, a Portuguese word, with no direct translation to other languages. Saudade. <laughs> Saudade is this feeling that we experience sometimes when we feel nostalgic or melancholic about someone or something that belongs to our past or that is far away. So that is the love that remains over time and over distance. So that goes back to the discoveries period when sailors left their families and cities in search of a new world, of a better life, of more adventures. Those who stayed felt so that, and those who left felt it too. 10 months ago, we LLM students were these sailors in search of a new world, of a better life. We also left left our loved ones, our jobs, our cities, and our countries, and came to NYU with a dream. The dream is what drives us. It gets us out of bed in the morning. It gives us something to chase and to fight for. It's the fuel of life, and we have plenty of it. And it is very common, especially in speeches such as this one, to talk about dreams, how we should go for them, and chase them, and reach them, and replace them with new, more ambitious dreams. But we know that already, because we are here, we are living our dreams. So I want to talk about something else, something just as important as dreams, but often overlooked, memories. My mother always told me that the only bank where she cares about having a big balance is the bank of memories, that wonderful place where we store the moments of laughter, of happiness, of triumph, of love, that we want to revisit and remember and relieve. And of course I knew that every time my mother talked about the bank of memories, I was in for something fun and random and memorable. I realized that she saw memories as the sort of weird currency that we have for free, that gain value when we share them with others, and that we can use as many times as we want. Dreams may fuel our life, but memories are our life. And then I thought, if the bank of memories is a thing, and if memories are a currency, 
then we are the central bank of our bank of memories. We have the power and the responsibility to build the memories we want. But when we live only for the dream, we usually think very little about this. We believe that we are young and that we have time to make more of those memories in the future. We have time to see Hamilton, to travel to distant places, to fall in love or to do whatever it is that we really want to do, but later. Because now, now we should focus on the dream, to be a partner, to be a judge, to be rich, to save the world. And days go by and then years go by and we may have fulfilled our dreams and replaced them with new ones that keep us going and going because that is the type of persons that we are. We go for our dreams. But I don't want to get there and realize that I skip the opportunity to build many, many memories worth remembering. I want my life to be a hop on, hop off bus ride with big wide windows through which I can see the world outside. Not, not a subway ride, straight through a dark tunnel with the occasional champagne milestone stops that we will call success. I don't want to realize one day that my account in the bank of memories is much smaller than it could be. I also came to NYU with many plans and a dream. I took the appropriate classes, I had amazing professors and thought-provoking conversations with my brilliant colleagues. I got a great job. I made incredible friends from different countries who I am sure will always be there to provide me with free accommodation throughout the world. <laughs> this year changed my life, it changed my plans, and it changed your plans too. However, when I recap it, it's the small random things that I made space for that immediately come back to my mind and fill my heart with joy. The first time I went to Washington Square Park, jazz music playing, people laughing, picnics in the grass, it felt like a movie. The day I took a selfie with Annie Lennox outside Skirball after an amazing concert. The time I chased Edward Norton along Fifth Avenue <laughs> until he eventually entered into his home, which now that I'm saying this, I do realize it sounds a bit creepy. <laughs> that day in the lake in Prospect Park. The first time I won lottery tickets for a show. The amazing tribute concert to David Bowie being in New York with my family for the first time. Spring break in Cuba. Being your speaker here today. All the adventures, the trips, the music, the friends, the meals, the secrets, the surprises, the pranks. Memories that enrich my bank as no amount of money ever could. Something to make me smile at the end, to make me feel satisfied and rich and happy with the life I live. Memories that I will laugh and cry about, that one day I will tell my children about. Memories that will make me feel saudade, the love that remains. And in the end, guys, in the end, that's the only thing that matters. So thank you, class of 2018. Thank you for the memories. Now it's time to make more. Let's go.